In this lesson, we're going to set up this horizontal scrolling carousel of diary entry images on our trip details view. So our current trip details view looks like this, and we're going to put our carousel of images right here. Now it's worth noting that at the time of recording, the mobile beta does not have a carousel that behaves like this one on trip.com where I just simply swipe with my finger to go to a different image in the carousel. If by the time you're watching this, there is a carousel available, we'll let you know in the description for this video. Now, the element that we're gonna be using for our carousel is actually this element called a horizontal list. So I'm gonna grab that, and I'm actually just gonna put that here in my group body and I'm gonna drag it to the top. And let's just first try to understand how this element works. So we've got a type of content here. Let's say for the sake of argument, I'm just gonna set this to be a diary entry for now. And then we've got a data source. And in this data source, I need to retrieve a list of whatever the thing is at the top here that I've chosen, so diary entries. So I could go for example, doing a search for all of the diary entries where the trip is the current views trip. In other words, all of the diary entries belonging to the current views trip. So trip equals trip details trip. And now inside of the horizontal list, we've got a setup that's very similar to our vertical list in that our vertical list has this vertical list item, which is holding a single entry in this list, a single row in the case of a vertical list. And it's pretty much the same thing for a horizontal list, only that a horizontal list item is holding basically a column instead of a row. So this is our horizontal list item. Whatever we define within the horizontal list item here is gonna be replicated for every entry in this list. So if I show, for example, in this placeholder text that Bubble has given me, if I choose the current items diary entries title, you can see that being automatically reflected in this other entry in the list. And let's just get rid of the supporting text just for the sake of argument. And so you can see here on one of the trips that we created earlier, we've got a whole bunch of diary entries and these are appearing in this horizontal list, which I can scroll across with my finger. Now it's worth pointing out, this horizontal list is not designed to hold a huge amount of data. Only our vertical list here is set up behind the scenes to be able to handle lots and lots and lots of data. And that's because what Bubble will do intelligently is as the user scrolls, it will then load in the data as it needs. Okay, so it's only gonna be loading in the data that it needs in order to populate what the user can see on screen. That's not so with a horizontal list element. With a horizontal list element, as soon as the view is loaded, all of the elements that are needed to populate this horizontal list, in other words, whatever data is returned by the search, all of that data is gonna be loaded at once when the view is shown. And so you can imagine if you're loading 10,000 entries, 10,000 comments, 10,000 social media posts, whatever it is, that's a lot of data. And your mobile device not really designed to be able to hold onto that much data. You've only got limited computing power, limited memory on your device. So if you are gonna be loading a huge amount of data, like you know Instagram posts or TikTok posts where the user can, in theory, just keep scrolling infinitely, then you should be using a vertical list because even if you've got a search here, which could, in theory, retrieve you know, 10, 20, 50,000 entries, Bubble is only gonna load the first 10 entries that it needs to populate or show within the vertical list. And then as the user keeps scrolling, it'll load the next 10 and then the next 10 and then the next 10, right? That method of loading is what we call lazy loading, as opposed to loading everything at once, even if we can't actually display it all on screen at once. 
Now, in our case, we don't wanna be showing here diary entries themselves. We're already showing them down the bottom here within this vertical list. Up here, we want to display the images from those diary entries. So let's delete this text element and let's change the data source for this horizontal list. We'll rename it as horizontal list images. The type of content here, I'm actually gonna set to be an image. So it's gonna be a list of images. And the data source here, where we're searching for all of the diary entries for the current trip, is actually correct as the starting place for this data source. Because what we're actually doing conceptually here is we are grabbing a whole bunch of diary entries and then for each of those diary entries that has an image, we want to pull that image out and display it here within this horizontal list. So the way that we write that expression in Bubble is by having this search for diary entries. So this here, as Bubble is telling us, is evaluating, i.e. is returning a list of diary entries. And what we can do, we have this very handy operator if we hit more here, and if we scroll down, we can actually say X items insert data field here. So each item's content, each item's date, or of course, each item's image, each item's image. And this now becomes a valid expression. So this is doing what I just described. We're pulling out a list of diary entries from our database, and then we're extracting all of the images that are attached to all of those diary entries. So we end up with a list of images, which is what this horizontal list is configured to accept, right? This is the data type that we have told this horizontal list it is configured to hold on to. So now that we have that data source, we can do something just as interesting, which is that on the horizontal list item, so that's this individual cell within the horizontal list, we can tell this cell that as your background image, I want you to show the image in your cell, right? In this entry. So, so we could choose here the background style to be an image. And then what image do we want to display here? Well, it's just going to be the image for this particular horizontal list item, given that all we ever have here is a list of horizontal list items and we have one item for each image returned by this data source, by this search. So practically speaking, that means that we can set the dynamic image for the background of this horizontal list item to my current items image. And then we can choose some display properties like we've already seen whenever we're using a background image for a group, like centering the image, and we'll make sure that we're cropping it as well. And you can see that if we load this up for our Italy backpacking trip, that we are seeing one image here, and that's the only image that we have because we only have one diary entry with an image here. So let me just create a few other test diary entries so we can see some more data appearing here. Okay, so I've just created a few extra diary entries here and you can see now the behavior of this horizontal list. Now, one thing to note is if I add a diary entry without an image, that will here just create like an empty entry within my horizontal list. And that's because of the way that we've set this data source up. So we're searching for all of the diary entries and then we are displaying each of their images. And if we don't have an image, it's still gonna create an entry in this horizontal list, which is not gonna have any image to display it. So we can stop that from happening by adding another search constraint here, which just makes sure that we're only returning the diary entries that actually have an image. So in other words, where the image isn't empty, where the image is not empty and that fixes that problem. Now we could probably clean up the design here a little bit. We've got a little bit of padding here on either side, which I don't think that we need. This horizontal list is already existing inside of group body, which has some padding. Then in addition, we've only got 150 pixels 
of height. I'm actually gonna bump that up to 400. These are numbers that you may need to experiment with to see what looks good. But if I set this to 400, and then for my horizontal list item itself, I set the fixed width here to be 320, then we get more or less sort of a vertical image. And I'm deciding, hey, in my application, most of the images that my users will be uploading are probably gonna be on their phones, they're probably gonna be on portrait. So most likely they're gonna look best when they're in this kind of vertical aspect ratio. So we've effectively got 320 pixels wide by 400 pixels high. And that 320, I'm pretty comfortable that that's gonna fit on, on most screens. You can actually find on the internet the screen size and pixels for a lot of common devices. This is one for iPhones. And you can see here that they're all much above 320. 320 is, is a size that's only been used for some of the older small iPhones. We of course do have a little bit of extra padding on either side. So if I was particularly worried about it, I could maybe go a little bit thinner, but I think for our purposes, this is a good starting point. We can always revise this later on based on user feedback. And so this is how things look right now. I think it's starting to come together. We've got a little bit of a border still appearing here and I might just adjust the corner radius of these images as well. So on my horizontal list item, let's get rid of the border and change the roundness here actually to eight pixels. Just bump it down a touch. And so this is how things look right now. I quite like the size, at least on my iPhone that I'm testing on here because the next image sort of peeks in from the right hand side. So it suggests that I can scroll to see more, which I quite like. The only thing is that this title for the trip, I think would look better below the images. So right now that trip title is actually appearing within the app bar. So what I'm actually gonna do, I'm gonna right click on this title and I'm going to clear it out and I can change the title style here to center so we don't have any issues with additional space being added below my icons here. And then just like we did on our diary entry details view, I'm gonna add in a text element I'm gonna add it into my group body here. And let's see, what have we got? We've got our trip type badge. So we should probably have it sitting right on top of that. It's of course going to display the trips title. The trip lives inside of the trip details view inside of this trip property. We all set this up much earlier in the course. And so that's gonna be the title field. Let me add some canvas placeholder so we can play around and see how things look. And certainly we want it to be a little bit more prominent than this. So let's try maybe this heading four. And we can get rid of the minimum height as well. And so this is how things look right now. I think that looks generally pretty good. You know, I might play with some of the spacing here. There's probably too much space down here and between all of these entries here. And that extra space to start with looks like it's because we've got this text, which is meant to be displaying the summary of a trip. We don't have a summary for this particular trip. However, the minimum height of this text element is 44. I can actually prove this to you if I double this to 88, then you'll see that gap has gotten even bigger. So what we wanna do is actually just remove the minimum height altogether. And we could always be extra safe and we could just have a rule on this text element, which is showing the summary, to actually only be visible when the trip has a summary to display. So I could say when trip details trips summary, is not empty. So in other words, there is a summary value for this trip. Well, in that case, then yes, let's show this text element. Otherwise we will hide it. And by default, it will collapse when it's hidden. So it's not gonna take up any vertical space within the view. And you can see that solved that problem, but I still wanna make some final adjustments here. I want to bring all of this information a bit closer together because 
as I mentioned in the last lesson, we've got this concept of proximity, which means that elements that are closer together, the user will see as being associated with one another. So to me, these are all are associated with each other. This is all metadata, high level data about the trip, whereas the content underneath are the diary entries, which is sort of a different category of thing. So I'm going to reduce the row gap here between all of these elements at the top and then underneath group body before we get to the vertical list, I'm just going to add some bottom margin. And this is often a little bit of experimentation. I'm going to start with 24. And yeah, I think generally speaking, that looks pretty good. The only thing I might want to do is just emphasize the diary entry titles a little bit just because right now they sort of blend in with the metadata here this font size and weight is exactly the same as what's up here so again this can be a little bit of experimentation i'm going to try just updating the font weight here for the diary entry title and you can see already that looks a lot better this is clearly a different category of thing than what is up here and when I click on one of these, I'm now viewing the corresponding diary entry. And we can really see this app starting to come to life now. The last thing in terms of displaying images is really just adding some kind of image to our list of trips here. So it looks a little bit more like this. So we're going to learn how to do that in the next lesson.